Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Impulse Control Experiment. We are getting close to finally wrapping up here. I have just three more episodes of you, so this is going to be my final guest before Holly and I jump into the wrap-up for you tomorrow. So I have somebody that is very important to me here this evening, um, my friend, my teacher, my mentor, Miss Sander Grace. Sander, how are you today? I'm excellent. I feel so honored. You know, I just, I didn't think of it till just now, Joel, but what you've really done is saved the best for last, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, you know, it's interesting I, that... I could have wondered why I was the last interview, and now I know why. <laughs> right, right. Well, you know, it's interesting because... Um, you were the, la you're the last one to get on the interview, but I would say probably because of our interaction through the process that I've talked more about you um, than anybody else through the project. So um, I hope you didn't get a little anxious waiting for your invitation. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> no, always at the right and perfect time. Everything in the right and perfect time. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, and so I, I thank you because, you know, if anybody hasn't caught this through the process, I would say through this whole, you know, ups and downs of change that I've been going through through the last year, um, which we're really coming up pretty close on about a year since you and I have met um, you. And of course, Paul being kind of this amazing mentorship team to me have really, um, really, really changed my life and really kind of expose me to more of what is possible and how happy can be and can look like and what else the universe can offer me. So I truly, truly appreciate you for, for all of that. So thank you. Um, so the reason that I wanted to bring you on and to chat a little bit today is you've been guiding me through the Reiki principles. Um, and although I was hoping by now to do my attunement, kind of got bogged down with the podcast and life and all that and need a little bit more time, which uh, to me is, is cool because I <laughs> I still have some some um, some ground to cover there, but I've been doing really good with the first two principles and kind of really where I needed to spend my time on worry and anger. Um, and while they come up sometimes, I'm getting much better at those as I move through the process. But I wanted to kind of, you and I dug a little bit yesterday into the other three principles and you had some really awesome things to say about those. And I was wondering if we could dive into those and not only what they are, but how they apply and maybe dig farther into what I need to be taking the next couple of weeks here steps before I get to my attention. Yeah, I love it. And hopefully it's supportive of others as well. So, so what, what might be interesting for people um, that are, haven't, haven't met me before is to know that I, I like to teach a traditional Reiki course, although I will be in 2019 la launching a more um, generic energy work course where it's more open to multiple modalities because obviously I'm trained in, you know, ancient forms of Chinese as well as Japanese and, and lots of other um, methods more new age um, things it, but up until now what i really enjoyed and and what i'm um the tune that i'm passing to you the training i'm doing for you is for traditional reiki and so in traditional reiki nothing is written down everything is passed from master to teacher orally and um and the practices were usually passed over you know like decades of time uh in today's society obviously you can jump on um you know, you can go to the local hospital on a Saturday and get your Reiki one attunement and on Sunday get your Reiki two attunement, you know, some sort of like quick, quick certification that they do for nurses or doctors or things. Um, and so, so what I've chosen is something more middle of the road. And so what seems more natural is like a 28 day process is what I often call it. You know, like many habits, it takes that long, that long to create the habit. And so, so we usually do like 28 days together where we make a practice of certain things. And so without getting into all of it, one of the things is to make a, a regular daily practice of the five principles. And so you and I have been talking about that. And right on, you grabbed a hold of the first two and just rocked them and rocked them and rocked them like every day, right? I, I thought that was pretty impressive, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. And it was, you know, it was the right thing at the right time. You know, as we, as we often talk about when you get into being grateful with the universe and things that the right things come at the right time. And when you and I started, which was the same morning as I started the experiment here, um, I think I think we met at like 5.30 in the morning that day or something really early. And it was just like as soon as the kickoff and the first two things that you said to me is don't anger and don't worry. And I was like, oh, well, that's kind of like the center of who I am at the moment. 
Uh, and so for those things, those things just to be taken out was a really, and, and now of course they didn't come out over overnight. And I struggled for at least the first 10 to 15 days of the experiment really hard with grasping those. And I spent so much time on those two that the other three, I was like, okay, well, those three will come. These are the ones I really need to spend my time on. And, you know, the right thing at the right time. And I've grown so much in those properties. I still get angry and I still worry from time to time, but they're much more manageable now. Yeah. One of the things I loved about the way that you approached that, though, is, is the idea that, um, you know, so it's, it's my truth that the universe will bring to you exactly what you need at the right and perfect time. And so so you had a lot of opportunities to practice not to worry or to practice not to anger during that period because you had asked for them. You started yeah. this, um, you know, Reiki journey saying, okay, these are my intentions that I set before me, which was the, the experiment for the most part. And so you said, these are my intentions. You asked the universe to bring you the opportunities to master these five principles. And so sure enough, here they come. And that's just a tribute to you that you were able to bring them so quickly to yourself and that you were able to work on your recovery time with them, you know, because, because if it happens once over the month or the, the period that I'm working with someone, okay, so it happened and I processed it. But when it keeps coming and coming and coming, I feel like that's a testament to your nature that the universe goes, believe it or not, Joel, you've got this. You've so fucking got this that I'm just going to show you that you've got it at work and you've got it at home and you've got it with your friends and you've got it when you're out and you've got it when you're not, when you're at home. Like, and you can see all these different ways in which you can master it and so I feel like that's a credit to you that you drew that to yourself right yeah right and and thank you and I, I feel like you know sometimes I don't realize things when you went until you know you've reframed them in this way where it was really like it was tough to take on the rapid fire of you know here's day one day two day three day four and they were recurring issues that I needed to be confronted with, needed that opportunity, but they came so quickly and so heavily that there was like, there was a little bit of that like, oh man, can I just get a break and have like a, a quality easy day? But at the same time, that's not what I asked for. You yes. don't, you don't go, you don't drop all of your vices when you've been a fairly vice driven person and set out an extreme work regimen in doing the podcast and all that stuff. You don't get that without getting boom, 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 boom. You know, you're, I, I asked, I asked basically to get my metaphorical ass kicked. Right. <laughs> and you would have been greatly disappointed in the whole process. Right. You know, and it came like, at me and it hit me that yeah, way. You needed that because without it, you would have been like, yeah, well, I mean, I did it, but there wasn't really any challenge. So of course I could do it. Right. 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 It felt like a big thing then it didn't feel like you had accomplished a big thing. Right. So, you know, I, I have a lot of people in relationships and, and I know that you can relate to this, but I think that a lot of the people listening can too. I have a lot of people in relationships that like when the relationship, um, like if, if it doesn't work, right, like maybe it's a coworker or a personal relationship and it doesn't work out. A lot of people feel like they need a certain mourning period because if they don't give themselves this time of sadness when someone should pass or make transition or when come in and out of their life or whatever, then they're like, well, then it must not have been very significant. And although I don't adhere to that same belief system, it's sort of true of the vices as well, right? Like if it had been like no big deal, like one day on, one day off, no big deal, don't even care, no, right? Then it would have felt like, whoa, I guess those weren't really a big deal. I guess they didn't, they weren't really deeply rooted a part of how I identified myself or who I am, right? And right. in some ways, you almost needed them to manifest in that way. You needed it to feel like rapid fire in order for you to feel like you had honored them, that they were enough. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And even taking that one step further, because technically here we are, we're pretty well into December now, and I've relieved myself of the experiment, and I'm now into working on, as opposed to this short term, you know, complete cessation, really difficult to uh, a lifestyle change that's going to allow me to take these things into the rest of my life. I see that they immediately came back and manifested themselves in similar ways, so that like, I, you know, it's, it's even more that like, I didn't just need this month and now I'm done and now I don't have anything. And it was super easy. I'm still back to, okay. So now that I've relieved that expectation of the experiment, I need to find a new way to handle it because it is still something that needs to be dealt with. It wasn't super easy. It's, there's still a little bit of, you know, like you said, whether it's self-identification 
um, which I feel like it's a lot more of an internal self-identification as opposed to an addiction that I have a physical need right. for or something like that. And that's true of most people. Um, I yeah. mean, not even with these particular items, but whether, again, whether it be something different like an occupation or a relationship, it's, it's similar. Is once it becomes part of how they, they call themselves, we'll say, you know, once it becomes part of how they call themselves, then if they quickly just release it, then they feel like that it hasn't been honored in some way. So, mm -hmm. so that makes sense that that'd be part of the process. I love the approach that you're taking of moving through this now lifestyle change. I think it was beautiful that you chose the process that you did where it was so extreme and then rebound a little bit like so the pendulum wing, right? And then sort of yeah. like, like let it let it sort of settle back. And then now you're like, okay, this is where I want to live. This is the zone I want to live in somewhere in this middle space. And so what I really want to do is create this space that is a, a life choice, a lifestyle. Not that it won't be ever growing and changing, because of course it will, because you're going to be growing and changing. So what you choose to happen in your life will grow and change. But right. that you know that, it, it, that you're coming back to center now after letting it swing a bit. Right. Well, I feel like there is some, you know, going from full speed to complete cessation, for lack of a better analogy, mm -hmm. is is not you know, that's not the way that we recommend as practitioners people to change. And so for me, being a practitioner, designing this experiment to be a little more intense um, also gives me a little bit more under understanding on why I need to go back to a lifestyle change that's going to taper off. And then, you know, maybe by this time next year, I am in a completely different state and my lifestyle change has just phased those things that don't serve me out a little better um i feel like that's more of a long-term strategy as opposed to what this has been yes. self-contained in what it was um, and i feel like that's a lot of the lesson that i learned especially having i would have liked to have wrapped up all 30 episodes in 30 days inside the experiment but i really like how some of these conversations have gone now that I'm quote unquote back in the real world yes. um, and I can see how all that dovetails and learning and all that stuff. I had a brilliant mother-in-law. So, so uh, some of you know that I'm a widow and I had this brilliant mother-in-law that said to me one time when I was first um, dating my husband, he was, um, he and I lived in different areas of the country. And so we weren't together all the time. So it was sort of an unusual dating situation. So we would come and be together for maybe like three weeks or a month. And then we would be apart for maybe like during a whole deployment or something. Right. And then he would be back. And it was always like a, a vacation. And she said to me, when we can, when we were talking about marriage and sharing life long term together, she said, I just want you to realize that up until now, it's like you've only been vacationing, like you're only dating on a vacation. Like it's not the real life because when you know he's coming back or when you know that he's coming back for a visit, you will like work ahead and then like not work when he's here. So you don't know right. it's like in a relationship with him and work, right? And so it's sort of similar to some of the vices that you're talking about is this idea that it was like, it was always great. Of course it was always great. You know, I don't know the last time you had an extensive vacation with your partner, but it's always great. But then to say, okay, how do I do that and go through my work day? And there's thousands of happy couples and relationships and partnerships that do that and they, they figure out that both are true. And I think you'll find that too. I think you'll find that both are true, that you're, you know, that this bit of like, you know, vacation from these things will also turn into a really healthy long-term relationship with these vices, you know, yes. either they'll be in or they'll be out, but it'll be a long-term plan. And so that, there's that adjustment period, the honeymoon phase, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. And I, and I feel like, I feel like for the first 10 days of December have more been like a reflex phase as opposed to like a honeymoon phase. Like I couldn't have any of this for this month. And so now I've been like, especially with food, um, I've just been like eating candy and fast food like all day, every day. And it's just like, okay, I need to stop basically intentionally free falling and, and get myself put right back on. And, you know, again, the way I like to set intentions is to set them, give myself maybe a two week period to set those intentions meaningfully until my start date and like look forward to that start date. And so like I will, and I can even recognize the negative opinions or the negative um, uh, outcomes of the actions. Like if I ate fast food twice yesterday and I have stomach ache all evening, well then set, that makes my intention that much easier. It's cause it's gonna be like, oh, well it's gonna be nice when I don't have this stomach ache because I took right. time to take care of myself. Brilliant, yes, mm -hmm. yes. 
Yes, I see that. I see that how it works for our clients as well. One of the things you want to talk about today, so maybe it's it's a good idea to move into it, is this idea that okay, just for today, do not anger. Just for today, do not worry. And and your recovery time is getting better and better on these because they're you know yes. life is opportunities for everyone. I don't care how long you've been master or master teacher, like the universe will always provide opportunities for those. It's just about your recovery time and how you handle them. But then the next one we talked about yesterday was um, just for today, be humble and appreciative. And we talked about this idea of what that humility or that humble really means. And, and it's easy when people think of it right away, they're like, oh, don't take credit, right? Like the idea that like, okay, if someone says, oh my gosh, Sandra, my life's so much better ever since I started coaching with you, ever since I started being a student of yours. And, and it's easy for me to be humble and go, well, you did it, Joel. Like I, I didn't do the work. You chose it. Like, yeah, I, I, I maybe provided the space for you. And so I do, you know, I do... You know, honor myself for choosing to lovingly hold the space but beyond that it was all you all these results that you have had are yours um but then what we talked about yesterday and i'd be curious to see what you thought about this now that we reflect on it a little bit is that we talked about but also if you choose not to it's also yours so when we think of being humble we often think about not taking credit or responsibility for things that are beyond us right someone compliments my son and says oh he has the best manners blah 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 and i could be like well you know that's then it's him you want to compliment right like although maybe i've modeled i taught it to him he chooses to, to do those things right or not or not and so equally when he doesn't choose them also not on me in my personal life or as a practitioner so I'm curious about that humble and appreciative. What have you thought about after we chatted that about that yesterday? So yeah, I mean that was exactly a point, like a good turning point in my process with Holly, with my wife, um, was that I had to come to a point where I realized, like even though there were things that we were arguing or fighting about, like not everything was on me, not everything was my fault, and I couldn't fix everything. So there literally came a point where I had to be like, look, some, you know, I can't, I, as you put it, get in the boat with you on this issue because it's not, I mean, you might see it from your point of view as something I'm doing, but you're staying in your point of view and not stepping out and seeing the external point of view. And so at some point it's my, it was my job to go like, look, you have to deal with your own stuff, you know, and, and I can't do that for you and I can't take that step and I can initiate the experiment and you can come along with me. But if you're not taking the extra steps outside of that to deal with your own thing, then I have to start realizing how that's going to affect me and thinking about how that's going to affect me. Um, and so I think, I think that was, that was the part of the interpretation of this one that I needed a little reframe on, you know, because like you said, being humble in my work in, in like, you know, Oh, thanks. You helped me so much. And it's like, all I did was talk to you. You're the one that did the work. You're the one that went forward and, you know, actually took the time to do the meditations and do the exercises and those kind of things. Um, but, but also realizing when it's time to step out and, and to be with, not just with Holly, with other people that I'm trying to work with just to go like, look, if you're not ready to do the work then I'm going to stop investing my time in, and, and my, more my time, because, you know, if I'm conversing with someone through, through social media or something, trying to get them to that point where they see that they can do the work. Um, sometimes I get that reflection. Like we had a, we had a long talk about, you know, whatever your issue was or whatever these tools are that I think would help you through your issue, whether that was specific or vague. And then tomorrow you're back on Facebook posting, memes about you know your mental illness and how you're stuck there and, and those kind of things and how that that's okay and that in and of itself kind of hits my ego if you will there you go i gave you a tool you didn't use it. it's not your fault you're failing or it's not my fault it's your fault yes, yes. but at this but at the same time i have to come out of that because it's not anyone's fault it's just the fact that you had a lot of stuff going on and you're not quite ready to do that work yet um here i am so yeah and and to take the ego out of that and be like look i gave you these tools like why would you not use them or even take it one step further oh well i i did that and it helped but i did it once and well, like i liked your story that you said about holly in the beginning so i want to give an example of where you said for example like okay so you've got to deal with your shit this is yours you have to fix this thing I guess the Reiki principle doesn't say that you have to do anything. It simply says that I choose 
to be humble and not allow it to be mine because it's not. Mm. Like, so it's not that you have to take care of your shit. This is yours that you have to resolve. That's not really necessarily the principle, but the principle is more that I choose to be humble regardless of whether or not you choose to hold me accountable or responsible for your actions. Like I, I'm responsible for my own actions. I do not worry. I do not anger, right? And then the next one that we'll move into is do your work honestly. That's where you hold yourself accountable. But the humble and appreciative is then not, not allowing yourself to buy into the stories that others might tell us about our role in their pleasure or displeasure or whatever the mm -hmm. case Does that make sense? Yeah. So we do hold ourselves accountable. So like, you know, moving on then, like that fourth principle is just for today, do your work honestly. Not because we're dishonest or we steal from people or things like that, but because the idea is what is your work? What are you here on our school to do, Joel? What are you, what are you here for? What's, what's your purpose? What's your calling? What is your work here and now? And I think that this process has, you know, because I've always bounced back and forth. And for the last year, I've had this real trouble bouncing back and forth. I want to do stage hypnosis. I want to do client work, you know. Um, and I like both a lot. And they intertwine on a lot of aspects. But through doing this process and through working with people and through receiving the gratitude of people who I have worked with, um, my my honest work is going to be more on this side of the coin than that side of the coin going, going further, forward, I do believe, which is admittingly um, tough, you know, because I just kind of teeter totter back and forth on that, on that thought process. But I think if I'm being truly honest, then my work is more on this side of the coin than that side of the coin. Right. So and, you know, one of the things that I know is, is what we, what we teach, we learn. And so it seems as though that you have claimed your space here on earth school right now as being a journey of self-development and personal growth and living your best life and really being your best self. And so it would make sense that if all day long you're supporting people in that process, then you'll be your own constantly, constant reminder, right? You're not going to ask of one of your clients something you're Absolutely. not doing yourself. So you are your own constant reminder of the life you want to live and how you'd like to do that. And so something as simple as like your food, for example, you know, we know that um, what goes into the physical structural body has an impact on mental, emotional states as well. And so you're not going to, you're, if you're working with a client and they're not getting the results up until they meet you because they are, you know, they're not caring for the physical structural body, so it can't perform for them. You're not going to ask them to be mindful of those things, you know, to work with a nutritionist or to find a trainer. You're not going to ask them to do this since you're not doing it yourself, right? So one of the, the moving into that field, you know, not that I hope, I hope you never lose stage because you have a gift to share with people, but I do think that by, by also considering that client work, it does afford you that opportunity then to really look at um, if I'm, if I'm preaching it and I'm teaching it, then I'm living it because there's, and there's no way I'm going to get up in the morning and do it other ways. So that's it. Right. You wouldn't do that. So do your work honestly um, is really about choosing the work then that you're here to do. Yeah. And, and I, you've not had the experience that you had up until now. You couldn't help nearly as many people because you wouldn't have an understanding, right? Oh yeah. Well, I totally I agree. You've heard those vices because yeah. now you have a reference to release them, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it, and it works so much. It's so nice to be in that place of like, look, I don't have your exact situation. I didn't go through exactly what you do. But like, uh, on some level, I've been through some things. Um, and as you and I talked later, uh, I might have some things that I don't even remember that I've been through or talked yeah. earlier, not later. Um, so who knows how far, once I start digging into it, how far that's going to go for something to me be able to connect with people on. Um, which is, uh, you know, in a little side note is, is, is both really interesting and really terrifying that there might be something like, why don't I have a memory of this time? Um, but that's, that's for later. Um, but being able to connect, like, look, I've been in that space where I can't get off the couch today. I've been in that day where, oh, I took a shower today. That's a win, you know? Um, so and so that being in that space and knowing there and being like, look, I, I get it that you don't think that anybody else lives that way, but I can sit across from you and describe it. And like, I know where you're at. I know where you're feeling and it can, you can move. It does get better. 
Yeah. So I, I, I absolutely honor that. It comes to me all the time. Like, so you know, early in my practice, I worked with a lot of cancer patients because I, I'm a full-time cancer survivor, and and then I worked with a lot of um, soldiers, uh, veterans, and and families um, because of my experience with my husband's PTSD. And just last night, I had someone um, come in, and her fiance is really struggling. Um, he's a former soldier and really struggling with his PTSD, and. Um, and I, I looked at and she goes, she goes, the thing is, is no one gets it. No one has any idea what it's like for me. And I was like, well, you're right. I'm not in your home and I'm not in your relationship, but I probably have a few experiences that are somewhat similar, you know? And so I think that this might be a calling. I mean, we definitely have lots of devices that you're struggling with. America is struggling with. Like, you're not the only one who's struggling with, I mean, what percentage of America, and I don't know that you were obese, but you were, you know, with weight or with food choices or, you know what I mean? Or right. exercise or movement or, you know, all of those things that you were releasing, America is struggling with them, not to mention there are parts of it where we're, we're bleeding into other countries, unfortunately, right? <laughs> and so, so these ideas, they're like, you're really in a great place to assist people. So then in order to do that, though, if you should decide or when you do more of that work, one of the things that I think is important is that fifth, um, that fifth principle. So the, the Reiki's fifth principle is um, just for today, show kindness and compassion for all. And you and I talked about what that compassion looks like. It's the idea that it's, it's, um, it's, it's more than having empathy because you are empathetic and you're mm -hmm. amazing at that. And people feel that right away. And that's why they love talking to you, including strangers on the streets, not just clients, right? Because you are so empathetic. But also um, having empathy without becoming part of the drama, with not getting in the story. And you were alluding to that earlier and, and um, how it's easy with people that we love or we support to get in with them and to want to be part of whatever the challenge is. And we so can't serve them that. And you, you know this as well or better than I do when I was – when I was sharing this with you for the first time on that first call on that first morning, you were able to tell the story as well or better than I could. So tell us a little bit about that. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it is, it's always tough for me not to, not to latch on to people. And I wish right off the top of my head, I could remember what that story was. Um, but I, I do feel, and as I was just expressing, like when somebody's got something going on, um, I, have a tendency up until now to jump into what they have going on to, to take on that total responsibility of which I don't ever use this terminology bit for the lack of a better term fixing you know yes. so, and taking on the responsibility and you know that's that I think is is tough about our our, our kind of work sometimes um and and this is again the reframe of how you make it not is that it's not my it's not my thing to make you do the work um, I can be here to support, to love, to add on, and to offer guidance. But if you don't do the work, if you don't schedule that appointment, if you don't get back into it, um, then it has to come away from, you know, being me, being on me. And if I do get in it with them, so, so let's say I have empathy and I can feel, so I'll just use a simple, simple example because we just mentioned it, the woman with the PTSD. Mm -hmm. um, so I can feel that, right? And I, I, I can recall that. It's in my brain somewhere. I can recall those experiences. I can feel what she's feeling. But if I get in with her, then I can't help her. So there's the cliche of, you know, when you're in the airplane, right, you put on your own mask first and, and that sort of thing. The idea is that it's very challenging to support other people if we're not on stable ground. So my, my silly story that I always tell that you alluded to earlier is this idea of I tell people to close your eyes and imagine that your favorite person, and maybe you guys want to do this if you're listening along, close your, close your eyes and imagine your favorite person is on a body of water and they're in like some kind of boat or ship or whatever you like and that you're on the shore somewhere, like you can be on the rocks or the sand or on a dock, whatever you like, and close your eyes and imagine them out there and they're shouting, help, help, help me. And you're for, what's your first instinct? And I will tell you that almost 90% of people, 95 maybe, will say to me first thing, well, I jump in the water and I go after them. And then I go, okay, what do you do when you get there? And they go, what? Well, I crawl in the boat. And I go, to do what? And they're like, to help them. And I was like, so what's happening now that your mash, your weight has been added to the boat, you're sinking twice as fast, and how is that helpful, right? And instantly everyone goes, oh, yeah. And every mm -hmm. once in a while I get like a, a rescuer or a life, a former uh, uh, life, what I want to say, life preserver. Lifeguard. 
lifeguard, yeah. yeah. And they'll have like a different protocol, but most of the time people say the same story. And, um, and the idea is that, that um, that's not helpful. And I, I think that, so as we're sort of like talking about wrapping up this experiment and moving on to what's next for you, what's the next phase, you know, um, so Reiki 1 is a journey for self-healing. Um, but Reiki 2 is really about, okay, how do I continue to master my own energy while I begin working with the energies of others? And I see as we're finishing out your Reiki 1 experiment and you're, you're pre preparing your, your experience and you're preparing yourself for your attunement, which will be coming up, one of the things I see is that already parts of you are like, ooh, ooh, how do I help to work within the energies of others, right? You start, your curiosity gets peaked because as you manage more and more of your own energy centers, you're like, oh, now I want to help other people, right? And so that makes sense that you're opening more and more to that calling that you also are qualified to do and certified to do. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it does, you know, every step of the way almost. And that's why I like being in this project and having this podcast is because like, oh, I learned this today and this is how that can, you know, um, influence others or help others or, or help, you know, someone to learn about that. And um, it's really been nice and i think you and i even talked when i was just starting this about how it just got to kind of write itself um and it kind of did it was like here's the here's here's what i dealt with today here's what i talked about today here's what i learned about and then here's me just you know talking into this microphone and having revelations and just learning things as it went along so it's really helpful to have those two pieces together at once I love it. You know. Well, I believe that you're understanding too. So in addition to the five principles in the Reiki majority, we're also talked about um, energy centers in the body. So um, people refer to those as chakras, maybe from your yoga class or from, from their understanding of energies and things like that. But um, one of the things that I know is that as you continue to work on that, which you have been like opening them up through chakra balancings or chakra clearings or having awareness of colors and lights and sounds and all those things and how those impact um, which you already knew from a hypnosis perspective, but now looking at them as just pure energy and, and connecting to energies and moving energies, um, I think is really cool. And so as you're wrapping this up, I think one of the things that'll come to you as you're preparing for attunement is this, what next? So I'm continuing to notice more and notice more. And you, you mentioned our conversation the other day, how you notice almost like psychedelic experiences that you can have or experience when you're in those really deep trance states or when you, um, so either through guided self hypnosis techniques or, or guiding them through hypnosis, but also through managing energy centers. And so in the next phase in energy, the Reiki too, when you start to work with others' energies, assisting them in that process um, can have a profound effect upon people's feelings. It wouldn't if you choose to do that next in your journey. Yeah, that is, that is really have. I've had a couple of experiences early on with other people and exchanging energy and things like that. And that is a whole nother level of awesome yeah again yeah level again. of awesome and i just like and then tell me about it because that's that's about the best job i could have right yeah um, right so there was Right. <laughs> I, I think I have to read, you know, that's a bit of a reframe to me to use the word awesome because the first time I think I put my hand over somebody and felt their energy, it freaked me straight the hell out. <laughs> but, um, like it, most great things in life. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Hey, that's, Hey, that's scary. Okay, good. Run towards it. Um, yeah. which is not the philosophy I've had for my whole life, but I mean, it seems to be working so far. So you're doing great. You're doing really great. Well, I thank you for asking me to join you today, but one of the things um, we can look at is you've talked about the five principles just for today. Do not worry. Do not anger. Be, um, be humble and appreciative. So that humble is one that as you're writing out these last few weeks before attunement, really looking at what that means and not the old cliche of, you know, don't take credit for your own thing, but also mm -hmm. don't, don't take credit <laughs> for yeah. the ones that aren't. And then um, do your work honestly. And I see you exploring more and more what your work is in this experiment. I think it's really opened up to what is your work here at our school? What are you here to do? Um, and then the use, uh, the kindness and compassion towards all and the compassion really that, that lesson that you, that you already know, but about not getting in the boat and yeah. help for poor. And so have the empathy, um, but don't become part of the drama. Don't get in the boat with them and allow yourself to love and support them. Uh, yeah. from the floor on solid ground so that they really can use you then to leverage their movement forward because you're in a solid space. 
And I think that's a beautiful, I think that's a lesson that more practitioners should really like of any kind, whether you're a therapist or whether, you know, you're a coach or something like that is because a lot of people are always like, well, I couldn't do that work because I would take it home with me, you know, or the other people's things would affect me. And I can see how important that is to stay out of that boat. Yeah. Oh. Well, and you, my answer is always when people say that, my answer is always you can't do the work if you do take it home. Right. You, you would burn out so fast. You wouldn't be able to help anyone. Your only, your only choice is to do that. Like you to be compassionate. Our only chance, if you really want to lead a life of service, if you really want to make a difference in people's life, like I know that's what I'm here for. And although as I'm becoming sage, older woman, I'm moving less out of that practitioner role and more into teaching the teachers, mm -hmm. training the trainers and speaking to the speakers. I still know that if I want to do the work while I'm here, that it's, it, I must practice compassion or else I can't, I can't afford myself the gift of doing this work. And I love it. And you, I know you do too. It just feels so amazing to, to get a life of service. So, so yeah, well, um, I know that the, the last three, humble, right? Doing your work honestly and kindness and compassion for all are really developing for you. And I look forward to following you in these lessons few weeks for you too. Awesome. Well, thank you. Well, Sandra, before we separate, um, if anybody wants, as they should, to learn more about you, to speak with you, to contact you, where should they look you up? Oh, thank you. So I have three places. My, my personal site's a little under construction, so if you're listening to it right now, give it a few weeks, but it's integrativelifeworks.com and integrativelifeworksincorporated.com. Uh, um, and then I also partner on two other projects with uh, Paul Ramsey, the hypnotist that, that you came and we trained with, and at besthypnosistraining.com. And I also work with Nicholas Spohn at Align with Love. So I have um, my own my own work that I do as speaker, trainer, and practitioner. And then I also work and partner with the two of them in some amazing projects. Awesome. Well, I highly re recommend you, obviously, uh, if anybody has any work they want to do or Sanders pushed any of your buttons or said anything that makes sense with you, get in contact with her. Um, and then that's going to just about wrap us up for today. So as always, do your absolute best to make every day better than the day before. If you fail, that's totally fine because tomorrow's going to be easy. Live with gratitude, celebrate your victories, and I'll see you all tomorrow to wrap the whole thing up.